How about you? I'm Hank. Welcome to Hamiltonville Farm. Today we've got some forestry mulching to do, so we're going to grab the old Bobcat with the T250 with the Bombalite MS548 mulcher on it and go uh, go down here and get close to the road. Uh, I've got maybe a quarter acre that we need to clear out. Gina wants me to clean it out, get it all kind of leveled and prepped because we're going to eventually make it overflow parking. If you don't know, we're flower farmers and we host events here at the farm and so we got to clean up a place for uh, overflow parking. We can accommodate, we had 800 people here at our Sunflower Festival last year. So however many cars that is, not 800 at one time, but throughout the course of the day. So I'm guessing, you know, a couple hundred cars we can accommodate. So she wants to be able to have another spot where we can put some overflow parking. So we're gonna go clear our spot down there and eventually it will become overflow. Won't, won't today, <laughs> but uh, we'll get it to that point. Before we get started, you always want to check your oils and stuff. I, I know I'm low on hydraulic fluid, so I've got to add some hydraulic fluid to it. See these winches here? I put a winch on my gooseneck. If you haven't seen that video, check it out. Um, you'll, be, you'll see some expert welding is what I'm telling you. <laughs> All right. So, uh, let's check the oil on this bad boy. Where's the dipstick? Oh, there it is. Oh, this thing's making oil. Good. Kind of beat. I'll kind of knock off the air filter here. One thing about forestry mulching, man, you got to keep these filters clean. I actually had a neighbor that lives, you know, the next the next uh, 50 acres over, caught his skid steer on fire. Uh, what happened was he he cleared a bunch of land and uh, put a pile up to burn it. And then he started mulching, you know, close to it, and it, they suspect that an ember from the fire uh, landed up in here, caught some of this stuff on fire. Anyway, it burned this whole machine down. But yeah, we're we're fine there. The inner one, inner one is a little dirty. But we'll take care. Of it. Good enough. Not too shabby. This, this Bobcat, man, a lot of people say, man, that hydraulic pump is bad, blah, blah, blah. The tracks are whining too loud. I've had it. I've had it uh, at the Bobcat service department. They looked at it, couldn't find nothing wrong with it. It's just loud. Um, so I don't, I don't worry about it. I do, um, I don't see any visible, like, major leaks or anything like that in the hydraulic system. So it's, uh, it's, I don't know, it's working. So also, me and Wiley put new tracks on it. They got these from trackcut.com. That was a fun video. It took us like four hours to put this one on and like 10 minutes to put the other side. You learn a lot the first time you do it. Oh, you know what I should do? I should have done that right there. Oh, well. Now I've got to clean my pole barn up. I gotta fix my door. I got I broke a hinge here, but I've got that I've got that on order. I paid like I don't know 19 bucks for it on Amazon or something to get it here. But let me put some oil in this. Man, I don't have big hands, but good lord. Bobcat all season hydraulic oil. That's extremely low. That's disappointing. Now, I know where one of the leaks are. It's in my uh, quick attach, my fa my flat face couplings. All right, let's go cut some uh, brush. Y'all want to?
I think this is telephone wire. Whatever it is, it ain't connected. But my assumption it would be it's a telephone wire. You guys tell me. That looks like that looks like telephone cable. So no danger of No danger of getting it, uh, getting all sparky on me here. But I don't want it to uh, get wrapped up in my machine. All right, let me show you. Let me show you exactly what uh, what we're going to. Can you see? I don't know if you can get to zoom in on it or not here, but see the other culvert there. That's my other driveway. And basically, that's where the property line ends. So, I'm going to come up here about, I don't know, 50 yards, maybe 75 yards. And go and Just make a square around this. Like I said, it shouldn't be a quarter acre. So, there's only... Now, I will say this. When we had timber cut off our property at 2016, they used this as the loading deck to start with. So, there's some big hardwoods laid down in here somewhere. But there should be, they should be big because if the timber company cut them, that, that means they're big, right? So I'll just have to dodge them. But I've only got one, two, three, I don't know, less than 10 big trees I've got to avoid. Everything else should be cut down. So let's get started.
skid steer or the machine or whatever, I don't know if it's the hydraulics or the machine, doesn't have a reverse feature. So you start getting all this stuff, man, you, it, it gets real stringy and stuff, I guess you'd say. It just wreaks havoc on that, on that ultra.
Well, a catastrophe. I was pulling down this, or going, raised up to top, bent my machine, or bent, bent the mulcher head over, and somehow the limb caught the catch drain hose, pulled it off the, the uh, carabiner, and then somehow it got caught all up under here. So that's a that's a expensive mistake. So I gotta gotta fix that. But this goes like this piece goes up into look here. See it goes down into the so somehow it got caught. It had to grab it from the top because these hoses aren't exposed underneath. There's a big metal plate and these hoses aren't exposed. So it had to it had to uh, catch it from the top and then suck it up under. But that's very unfortunate. Look at that. Oh on it. That's an expensive hose too. Ah. Oh well. Well, the reason why we didn't catch it on film is because I mean, I'm just going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. It gets kind of mundane, kind of boring. So we cut the cameras off for, you know, 15, 20 minutes, then take a five minute clip and cut the camera off for 15, 20 minutes. And of course, that's when this happens, you know. But anyway, we'll get it fixed and we'll get the machine back in running condition here soon. All right, we got it lent back to the house. We'll go ahead and take the hose off, run it up to uh, the auto parts store, get them to make me a new one, and uh, get started. So let's go ahead and. Get this bad boy off first. Of course, no job on Hamiltonville Farm is complete without a crescent wrench. So, let's get, uh, I say that, but my big crescent wrench is in my truck. Let's see if we can get us some channel locks. My Michael Pro Tools channel locks. Oh yeah, look at that. That stinks too, because that's that's so much money to throw away. Alright, so now we'll have this ready. What I might do, what I might end up doing is I might end up getting that um, quick connect, that flat face quick connect swapped out or rebuilt because it leaks a little so all right let's see what socket we need over there is it a 10 millimeter you guys think let's see i think they run into here let's see i may have to yeah let me take this whole thing off here take a look it might not be in here i may have to take the What's going on here? What is going on? Hmm. That's, that's not a 10. What size is that? Yes, yeah, it's 10. Is it a 9? Find out. No, it's a ten. Is it just not coming out? Maybe it's standard. There it is. That's the problem. You gotta use the right size. Alright, I can do that. Super accessible. There we go. Uh -huh. So we just gotta figure out which one is the, the case drain, which is this one. Which is the hardest one to get to. <laughs> uh, let's see, I'll just take this whole 
that's what I'll do. I'll just take this whole part box off here and tilt it back ever so slightly. And that should give me access to it. It should be pretty simple. I wonder what this does. Oh, it held uh, the extra teeth. So that's nothing. Shouldn't be any nuts underneath them. I bought these five mil thick nitro gloves. I don't like them at all. They just rip everywhere. Everything rips on them. Should have got nine mil. Should just lift it. Oh, it's got one right here. Did I miss one? I did. Actually, we'll just slide it to the. Yeah, we'll just slide it that way. And we ain't gonna mess with it. Yeah, that's a good design, Bummer Light. Good job on that. So this is the hose. Here. Mm. It's not leaking, but man, I don't know that. I might need to buy another T. Is that designed to do that? Probably be a bit, probably a safe bet to buy another one of these. I probably need to take it all off. You know, if you're going to get this far into it, you got to do it right. Okay, it's only going to be one. It's only going to be one T. So I don't have to disconnect these. I can take this off and be fine. Three quarters. All right, eleven sixteenths on top. Seven eighths maybe. we we're good there I think when, when the yeah so we don't need to buy another T T joint that's good save us a couple dollars it, it just got loose it just got loose from when it got when the uh, hose got pulled like I said, it wasn't, it wasn't leaking, so that's a good thing. So let me put this back on. I need those pig mats is what I need. Y'all ever heard of them? Clean up fluids from leaking everywhere. So we'll run this uh, we'll run this hose to the the auto parts store. I got the broke hose in there, and we'll get the hose put back on.
We'll be back in business. Three hours later. All right, we're back. Went and got the hose. Got the new fittings put on it. Any guesses? Leave a comment below if you want to guess how much it cost me to put a new hose on this thing. Made the comment? I'll wait. All right, you made your guesses? $175.23. That was the total. Ugh. <laughs> and I went to, you know, I was going to lunch and I was sitting there eating and I was like, doggone it. I should have put a string on the end of that when I pulled the hose out so that all I had to do is tie the string on it and pull it back. You know, I got these great ideas, but they're always like an hour late, you know? So hopefully it's not too much trouble. Hopefully it's not too much trouble to get this uh, fed through here. I don't think it should be, but we'll see. I, I might be able to get away with a uh, coat hanger or something if I can't feed it through here. And I didn't get to predict the coating, the sheath for the hose. Because the guy that made the hose, uh, like, I hope you didn't need that because I threw it away. I said, like, oh, okay. So we'll just pay attention to that. Wrap this in here so it doesn't get a lot of dirt in it. I'll tell you what, this Harbor Freight electrical tape, like a screen door on a submarine. Hopefully that keeps on, keep it from not getting any dirt on it. All right, let's see if we can fish it through. Oh yeah, piece of cake. There she is. That wasn't very difficult. Simple enough. Reconnected. What do you think, fellas? A knife. I didn't want to burn another glove, but I guess I will. So I got this piece of sheathing left over. I'll slide it down there. Some some protection. Get this off on this end. In. Maybe give you some protection. Pressure right there where it connects there. I think we're about ready to be back in business, fellas. They're both 11 six or seven eighths. Seven sixteenths is too big. What did I take it off with? Oh, I took it off with the vice, didn't I?
Let's button her back up. Not, not too bad of a job. So this Bombalite MS-548, it's an entry-level machine. So if you're a DIY, if you're a small landowner, if you're a, a landscaping company that doesn't specialize in forestry mulching, but you know, you do it, you have customers that do it, that want you to do some light work, then this is a good machine for you. Next time I go to the Bobcat dealership, I'm going to need some, uh, buy some hydraulic oil. Alright, let's plug her in and see what happens. Oh, you know what? Uh, yet another thing I should have done, I, I've got these great ideas after the fact. I should have left all that open in case I got a leak. Now if I got a leak, I got to retake all that stuff back off. Way to go, Hank. That aggravates me. Can't believe I think of that stuff after the fact. But that's experience, you know. I'm not experienced in this. Wow. I might have to fix that for sure. Yeah, I'm going to I'm have to figure that out. I'm definitely not going to take that thing out in the woods. Like that, so I'm gonna take this off. I'm not gonna do it on camera, but I'm gonna take this loom off and feed that hose through there. But let's just see. Let's just see if it works. she works let me just take this off and see if there's any leakage so a couple lessons learned right don't put this back together until yeah, we're, fine. we're good to go all right, so I'm going to feed that thing through the the wire loom there, and uh, get it get it kind of buttoned back up. But you know, 175 dollars later, we're back in business. So not too difficult of a job. The bomber light made it easy. The access is super easy. And a couple lessons learned, though. You know, put that string on there to pull it through. 
and uh, check for leaks before you tighten everything back up as far as the covers go. But, you know, the next time I have to do this, which hopefully won't be soon, I'll remember those two things. Anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. Take care. God bless you guys.